Aloha everyone, welcome to Skincare with Hiram. If you don't know who I am, my name's Hiram and I'm passionate about teaching you how to perfect your skincare routine. So make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so that you can see my videos every single week. You guys, it has felt like forever since I filmed a video. I think it's been like a week. So I guess I'm retiring, cause that's a long ass time. I swear my filming setup is like my second home because I'm in here every single day. So it's felt kind of weird, but also kind of nice, but also kind of weird. So I'm glad I'm back. <laughs> I am so excited for this video because I'm going to be reacting to James Welsh Harper's bizarre skincare routine. And I have been wanting to film this video for a long time. Trust, right when it came out, I was like, I want to film this. But funny enough, literally right before James Welsh Harper's bizarre skincare routine came out, I had already done another reaction video to one of James Welsh's skincare routines. So I was like, okay, Hiram, give the people time. And it's finally here and I'm so excited to react to his routine because if you guys don't know who James Walsh is, y'all need to do some research. James Walsh is an amazing skincare content creator and literally one of my biggest inspirations and also the reason I was able to get a jump start on YouTube. I remember when I had maybe 10 to 30,000 followers, somewhere around there, and James Walsh found out who I was and he offered to collab with me and I was just star struck. And ever since then, he has been an incredible support system. Can we just take a moment to appreciate the love that the skincare community has to give? I love this community. It's such a place of positivity. And I mean, no community is perfect, but I have not had a single bad experience with any of the skincare creators in the community and there's, it's just such a beautiful community. And I'm really excited that James Walsh got to be featured on Harper's Bazaar because he deserves it. I remember after I did my Harper's Bazaar video, he messaged me congratulating me and I was like, you need to get on Harper's Bazaar. Let me know how I can help, bitch. And it's here, even though I'm like two months late. If you haven't subscribed to James Walsh already, I will have his YouTube channel linked in the description box below. Please go follow, go support, he's great. Hello everybody, my name's James Hi. Welsh and tonight I'm sharing with you my evening skincare routine. I'm so excited. I love nighttime skincare routines. They're my favorite. So before I get into my routine, I need to let you know, of course, I am a skincare reviewer. It's my job to try so many different skincare trends and products. So and he the does. routine I'm about He's to so knowledgeable. do isn't like a normal, normal routine. There's probably maybe one or two too many products. <laughs> and it's definitely not for everyone. But my evening routine I'm is interested in to see how many products there really, are. Really get to not think about work, despite my work being about skincare. <laughs> but it's like the I usually take an hour to do my evening skincare routine just concentrate on an myself. hour a treat as a real self-care moment wow mad respect an hour an hour to do your nighttime skincare routine that's another level of commitment y'all i can't even do that and that's one of the reasons i respect james because he's so committed to trying so many different products and really invests a lot in his skincare routine i will admit i'm the person who's like if my skincare routine takes longer than 10 minutes I don't want it. Mad respect, honestly, because that's a big commitment. But he does bring up one thing really interesting. This is just a side thought. That even though his work does revolve around skincare, he still likes taking an hour break from life to do his skincare routine. And that's honestly something I really want to work towards. I will admit, being that my work now is skincare, it does kind of affect my normal morning and nighttime routine. It's not as much of an escape as it used to be, which is maybe one of the reasons why I do like to keep it fast and quick. So I feel like I need to work to get back to that point. The first thing I do oh, is okay. put these little patches in my I've These never tried those, but he always uses that them. Stop any hair falling onto my face. I break out very easily from hair products. Mm. Um, so when I cleanse, I don't want any of that product touching my face. Mm -hmm. So I am a religious sunscreen user. I use it every Yay. single day, no matter what day or time of the year, inside and outside. So I have to take all that off. I always double cleanse. Good. So of course a cleansing balm uh, yes. or cleansing oil for me is the best way to really, really just melt everything away and clean it, it off before it's I go best. in and cleanse my skin. So this is the Deviant Skincare Cleansing oh. Concentrate. As you can see, it's this weird mix of like cleansing balm and yes. cleansing oil. And this amazing color here. This is formulated with loads of kind of acne safe oils. <laughs> so it's pretty good for all skin types to be honest with you. But I'm not gonna go to ingredients with this one too much because Sometimes skincare is just about liking a product because it feels good and it just does the job it needs to do. I feel like that's a call out. <laughs> no, but he's absolutely right. Like I'm definitely the person who finds passion within skincare through ingredients, knowing what's in it, determining what ingredients I want and what I don't want. But for a lot of other people like James, and we've had conversations about this before, his attraction to skincare is primarily based off of the experience, wanting a nice, comforting, enjoyable experience. And if he likes the feel of a product, he's gonna use it. As for that cleansing balm, I believe I bought it once, but I 
think it got delivered to my old address before I moved and I still haven't been able to try it. It may be stored somewhere in my piles of unnecessary skincare products. I do have their brand's gentle resurfacing liquid, but I haven't tried the balm yet. I really want to. The ingredient list is very high quality. They primarily rely on cannabis sativa seed oil as the primary oil to break down the sunscreen, makeup, and oils on the face. And that's a really high quality oil. I mean, most skincare products kind of advertise that as their primary beneficial oil. So the fact that it's the primary ingredient in a wash off treatment is, I mean, it's really impressive. It speaks to how high quality this formula is. It has camellia seed oil, sacha inchi oil, blueberry seed oil, barrage oil, broccoli oil, like really, really good ingredient list. It's a little expensive, but then again, my favorite cleansing balm is the Then I Met You Living Cleansing Balm, which is also kind of like a luxury product, I guess you could say. Overall, love this ingredient list. I'm gonna buy it after I film this video because I really wanna try it and I don't know what happened to my last bottle. Yeah, I can't remember. As a teenager, I had pretty temperamental bad skin. Um, I had acne, but for me it was the dark spots, the post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation that was left after. That, you know, whilst the doctor could give me something for my acne, he couldn't really give me anything to take away that those dark spots. Mm -hmm. Here in the UK, I don't think dermatologists are as popular in a way as they are in the US. So oh, interesting. if you've got skincare okay. issue, you go to a doctor and they immediately, pretty much immediately just seem to prescribe you with, you know, prescription skincare. That's how it was back when I was a teenager, a long, long time ago. So I kind of had to do my own research into how to get rid of those dark spots when I was like 17, when like the internet was just invented. And that just kind of got me obsessed with skincare and ingredients and what works and what doesn't and just seeing it as like a hobby instead of trying to perfect my skin. For me, I say skincare is about uh, progression over perfection. It's about um, products being functional, but fun as well. I think there's nothing worse than having um, boring products that make you feel like your skincare is a chore. That's a great point, and I totally respect that perspective. I mean, overall, when I found James Swelsh, the, the topics I found him talking most about were how to get rid of dark spots and post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, which is the dark spots you get after having pimples and acne, which is a really tricky thing to get rid of, and thankfully there's a much larger conversation around how to get rid of those. But back when he started his channel, which he started his channel way before mine, I think like, oof, four years before mine? I don't know exactly, I'm not sure what the dates are. He's definitely way more experienced with the online skincare scene than I am. And I'm sure I can speak for him saying that I'm so glad to see that there's a much larger conversation about how to get rid of dark spots and other problems within the skin. But his perspective on skincare not being a chore, I totally agree with. I don't think that skincare should be something that you feel like you have to do, but don't enjoy it. There should be a level of enjoyment behind it. I find that enjoyment through the ingredients, knowing how it works, how the formula works, all the kind of technical stuff. But a lot of people like it purely for the experience, how it makes them feel. And I know James Walsh has always sided with that perspective. And the cool thing about James Walsh and I is that we have very opposite skincare opinions. <laughs> like very, very opposite. I mean, there's a lot of things that we agree with, but there's also a lot of things that we totally disagree with. And I think my favorite part about our friendship is that we can have totally opposite differing skincare opinions and still respect each other's opinions. And it's great. I love it. I respect his skincare stances. And let me just say the internet might need to take a note. <laughs> I've seen so many people try to pit us against each other because we have different skincare opinions. And I'm like, girl, all over a skincare product. I love hearing his recommendations and perspectives. And I'm I honestly found so many new skincare products that I love because of him. So keep doing what you're doing. I rushed into this so quick, I forgot to say my skin type. So I'm oily oh, in my yeah. T-zone, very oily. And I have very dry-ish kind of cheeks here with mild rosacea and some irritation down the side. My skincare routine today, I'm gonna be concentrating on um, repairing my skin and calming my skin and soothing it. There's gonna yes. be not many actives. I'm not gonna be exfoliating, no retinoids, anything Okay, tonight. wow, so gentle All skincare. For the next week or so, whilst my skin recovers and repairs. So my next product is another cleanser. This is the Matcha Hemp Hydrating Cleanser. <laughs> I knew that this was gonna be in here. I, yeah, I totally called that. It has some lovely humectants and moisturizing ingredients in to um, basically not strip your skin of all its natural oils and hydration. Mm -hmm. I think it's for very me, gentle. somebody it's with a very, very combination gentle skin, I look for pH balanced cleansers and gentle cleansers because I need something that will cleanse enough for my oily T-zone, but is gentle enough on my rosacea and drier patches. pH balanced skincare is like a trend that we saw a lot last year within skincare. And we see a lot of trends in skincare. It used to be like makeup, right? That had like all the different trends. But as skincare has become more and more popular, mm -hmm. we've been seeing loads of different trends. And I think like along with pH balance, new actives and brands trying to find the next big best ingredient was a real trend last year. 
And now those same brands are telling us that we need to calm down this year and we need to read. T is spelled. Yeah, that's true. I do think it's kind of a funny situation. I think it's a combination of both brand messaging, but also the widespread skincare industry seeing how people were utilizing their skincare products because there are, you know, stronger strength, higher active based products. But I think maybe a lot of brands or people, myself included, didn't realize like how frequently people would be using these harsh treatments like exfoliants and how much it would damage people's skin barriers. And now there's a big focus on like calming, gentle, soothing product. And that cleanser specifically, I mean, I wasn't surprised to see it at all because that has always been James Walsh's favorite cleanser out there. And it was funny because when I had first started using that cleanser, I was kind of like, nah, like it's okay. I don't mind it. But he was actually the reason that I started using it again. But I know he loves that product. It really is focused on gently cleansing the skin. I say it all the time, cleansing can be one of the most damaging aspects of our skincare routine because it can really strip the moisture barrier and get rid of the natural oils in the skin that help to protect the skin against further damage and things like breakouts. And that's why it's important to use a gentle cleanser. That one I would say is a bit more on the more hydrating side, which I think is honestly kind of reflective of the products that I typically see James use. He does have oily skin, but he likes a lot of hydration in his skincare routine. He really likes that overall super glowy look. And so I'm not surprised to see that whatsoever. But I feel like the next big trend is bringing everything back to basics, calming down with active, yep. selecting one or two. Yep. And really looking after our skin barrier like I'm doing today. Exactly. Okay, I'm yep. gonna rinse away and then go into my next step. I completely agree with him and this has been something I've been seeing happening is people are just overall more focused now on skin health rather than immediate results. And honestly, I am so happy to see it because while yes, actives can be really effective and amazing, you still have to nurture and maintain the health of the skin's natural barrier. And that comes best through, in my opinion, a gentle active approach, reducing how many products you're using, intentionally using active formulas, but only enough to gently treat the skin without over exfoliation or over treatment. And I'm so happy to see that that is the next trend because God knows we need it. So onto damp skin, I'm gonna go in with my Advanced Stale Radiance Dual Essence oh, from Cosrx. Okay. I do this oh, on dual damp skin essence. because the idea is that when your skin is damp, your skin I don't know that can product. kind of accept ingredients better into the skin. But really, I just like the way doing a full uh, skin routine on just slightly damp skin makes my skin looks. It mm. gives it this kind of like really dewy, plump, hydrated look. Okay, cool. What I love about this product is the dual side. So you have your uh, have stale that leucin one. in That's here. That's so cool. Um, which is ba it's basically hydrating and moisturizing. And then you have your niacinamide kind of actives in here. Niacinamide for me is one of the best ingredients I've ever used in my whole life because it just yes. does so many different things. But for me, it's about controlling the sebum production, regulating it, but can, it can also help with um, barrier repair as well. Mm -hmm, yeah, I've I'm so glad he mentioned that. First off, um, James was one of the reasons that I first discovered niacinamide. I'd seen a larger conversation around it and I was like, what is this ingredient that's so hard to pronounce? And obviously here we are, the obsession with niacinamide is real. But I feel like James was the OG fan of niacinamide. I haven't seen that product. I mean, I have seen the snail mucin essence from CrossRx, which I really like. It's a really good formula, but I haven't seen the dual essence. Let me look at that. How did I not know this was a thing? Where have I been? Damn, this is an amazing ingredient list. This is really cool. So it has the snail secretion, but then it also has like niacinamide, panthenol, glycerin, meadow foam seed oil, sunflower seed oils, allantoin, macadamia seed oil. So many good ingredients. I will say this does look a little bit intense for me, but I would be open to using it overnight because I love the snail mucin product from CrossRx, but my only complaint was that it is a little bit heavy on the skin, which is why I've only used it overnight. And paired with these ingredients, while the dual essence looks great because of Oh my God, I'm so sorry, you guys. My stomach is growling so much. I don't know why. Did I have dinner last night? And I haven't had breakfast this morning. Maybe that's why. Because it's paired with all those moisturizing oils, it may be a little bit too rich for me, but that's not gonna stop my curious ass from trying it out. This looks interesting. But I love that he also brings up that niacinamide is great for barrier repair because that's one of the things about niacinamide that I haven't spoke to as much, but it's really, really important and one of the main reasons I love it. Niacinamide is amazing for making sure that your barrier is protected and supported while simultaneously controlling sebum production so that you're not overly oily. And this is amazing for anyone who does have oily skin and struggles with barrier maintenance because it feels like every barrier product out there is just so heavy and rich and thick on the skin. But you can find so many niacinamide formulations that are really lightweight and fast absorbing. So just another reason to love niacinamide. One of the many reasons I'm in the love affair with niacinamide. One question I always get asked is if I've ever seen a dermatologist or an esthetician mm. or had a facial Oh, I'd love to like know. That. 
And the answer is no, because it scares me a little bit. Um, I was scared to go to a dermatologist in case they tell me to stop using too much skincare because then I won't have a job. But then I'm also scared to go and get a facial because I don't think I'd be able to relax through it. I think I'd be so interested in what they're using. I want to know. Oh, yeah. I want point. them to talk me through everything. And I just don't feel <laughs> like it would be a nice, relaxing experience for me. <laughs> that sounds really weird. I love that. <laughs> I don't know. One day, maybe. I don't know. Wow. Props to him for opening up about that. that I think that's a very valid reason. You know, he seems to have skin that doesn't struggle with anything really severe. And dermatologists dermatologists are really where you go to when you're having severe skin struggles, cystic acne, severe scars, etc, etc. And going to an esthetician is for a more enjoyable, relaxing experience. Although you can go to either one for pretty much any skin concern, but those are the primary reasons people do go to those people. And I like that he's open and honest about not going to them. And I think it's a testament to how well you can take care of your skin without having to go to a dermatologist or esthetician. They are both amazing resources and incredible for treating issues in the skin and having amazing experiences. But for a long time, I thought that the only way you can take care of your skin is to go to a dermatologist or an esthetician. And at least here in Hawaii, dermatologists are like 200 to $300 a session. So there's a lot of people that can't access that. And I think one of the encouraging things about James Walsh's example, why do I keep saying his full name and not just James? <laughs> We're friends, I should be past that point. I think it's great that James is showing that you can take care of your skin and you can learn about ingredients and product functionality without having to spend that much money. If you want to go to those people, you're more than welcome to, but for a lot of people who can't afford those, you have skincare products as an option. I'm gonna re-dampen my skin because I like to okay. do a whole routine damp. And usually when I'm not filming, I just leave my skin damp after a cleanser. Mm -hmm. Then I'll go into every step and then I'll spray my skin before moisturizer and apply moisturizer. But because I'm filming, it takes a bit longer. Longer. I'm gonna dampen my skin between each step with the Cosrx and Wow, between each step. Oh, okay, yes. I've used that one before. I have used that product. Honestly, I didn't notice any results. I didn't notice that my skin either liked it or disliked it. Or, so I'm kind of like, whatever. But the ingredient lists are good. And I mean, it's James Welsh. He is the toner king. You cannot not have a skincare routine on James Welsh's channel without a toner. So I'm not super surprised. My next product is the Even Prime Barrier Repair oh, Serum. Oh, how did he get um, a purple one? some like uh, essential fatty acids, ceramides. Oh. What people consider the building blocks of your skin. So mm -hmm. when my skin is kind of like impaired after experimenting a bit too much. I do tend to go completely fragrance free. I cut out all mm, the actives. Okay. I think a lot of people think I love fragrance from my videos, but you know, I'm not against it. I just mm -hmm. know there's a time and place for it. Mm -hmm. But this serum is just so nice and light. It um, It's like nourishing and moisturizing enough for my cheeks. So I actually have used that serum before. Thank you Even Prime for sending it. I don't know how we got a purple one. Cause mine's gray. But that purple one looks pretty cool. Even Prime is a great small brand that takes a lot of inspiration from Korean skincare and has some great formulas. I love their moisturizer. I used that serum and I don't know if it's just because I'm really picky when it comes to barrier repair serums. Like I'm really, really picky. That one, I think the benefit is that it feels really nice. It's very lightweight on the skin. It sinks into the skin really quickly. I didn't notice anything really transformative or really super noticeable in my skin when it came to the results. But looking at the ingredient list, it has an amazing ingredient list and I love that it is focused on barrier repair without the heavy greasy feel. So I don't have anything against the product. I think maybe I just need to use it a little bit more because I think I just didn't use it long enough to notice results, but I know that James Walsh is a fan of that product. Oh my God, why do I keep saying his full name? I can call him James. <laughs> But it's also refreshing to hear him say that he does cut out actives and he cuts out fragrance when he's focused on barrier repair and recovering his skin. I mean, that's one of the main reasons I take a staunch approach when it comes to fragrance and skincare, because I know a lot of you guys are trying to recover your skin, trying not to sensitize it. But I say that James does have a really good balanced perspective in the sense that he's not opposed to fragrance, but he knows when to not use it. And I think overall, that is a good philosophy. Not everyone needs to be as opinionated as me when it comes to skincare. I just feel like it's not necessary and I don't want to recommend products with fragrance send them to you guys. But I'm glad to hear that he doesn't use it when he's focused on barrier repair in order to curb that possible irritation and sensitivity. My next serum is the Cosrx Pure Fit Seeker mm. Serum. This is really just to calm down any redness and irritation and inflammation. One, two, three. That's a bit more I love how precise it is. super <laughs> lightweight serum that kind of just calms down any irritation. So I have seen that serum online. I don't think I've used it, but if I remember right, Cause RX Pure Sika Serum. I mean, honestly, I'm not surprised that James is using so many Cause RX products because he is like a huge, huge, huge fan of the brand. I think it's one of his favorites, but let me look at these ingredients. Oh, wow. So this has 76% Sika solution. So Centella Asiatica, wow, that is a strong concentration. But I mean, it has a really simple ingredient list. It's also formulated with glycerin and panthenol, really simple. 
whole, so it really just focuses on getting the benefits of centella into the skin. I think it's great. I love centella asiatica. I think it's an incredible ingredient. That's probably one of the highest concentrations in centella asiatica I have ever seen in a product, but it's amazing for helping to help repair your skin, heal damage, so I'm totally here for it. Avant garde reusable oh. sheet mask from Oh, Experiments. reusable, that's so cool. Um, and this is, I love sheet masking. I used to do it <laughs> every single day. <laughs> it looks um, great. <laughs> but I think the more you use sheet masks, the more you realize how much waste comes with a sheet yeah. mask. And I'm not, yeah. I'm not like the most environmentally conscious person. <laughs> like I'm, now I'm trying to do like a little but enough <laughs> when it comes to saving our planet. So I didn't sheet mask for the longest time and then I saw this, this like silicone occlusive layer that just traps in all that hydration, mm -hmm. all your skincare. And when you take it off, you're left with that same dewy glow that you get from sheet masks. And what's great about this one is once it's done, you take it off, you rinse it with your normal cleanser mm -hmm. and then your skin is left glowy and you can reuse it and reuse it and reuse I'm it sorry, for as long as you live. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna give myself 10 minutes and then I'll be back. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's so hard to take him seriously when he's talking like that. I love that he's using a reusable sheet mask though. I have tried to take a big step back from using sheet masks because you can get similar benefits from either your normal skincare products or just using a mask that comes in a jar that doesn't have a daily waste. Or I shouldn't say daily, you're not using sheet masks every day, but a consistent single use waste. We don't need sheet masks and you can find benefits in so many other products. And the great thing about a reusable one like that, not only is it better for the environment, but he's right. It does create an occlusive like sealant layer to really help all of those ingredients and benefits get deep into your skin and that's one of the main benefits of using a sheet mask in general is that it helps to really create the seal over the top of your skin and so because of that why does there need to be single-use sheet masks you know we are in an industry that's very much focused on consumption waste all of those problems so the more that we can focus on promoting the message of reusability sustainability I just it makes me happy so damp and skin again <laughs> And then really quickly into my moisturizer. Again, this is Cosrx. I love Cosrx. Oh, wow. okay. I feel like they're a more modern take on like CeraVe. This is the mm. Moisture Power Enriched Ooh. Cream. That's a very bold statement. Cosrx is definitely one of those brands that I think adopts Korean skincare philosophy, but in a very simple form. And I think maybe that's why like I like Cosrx products. There's a few products from the line I love, but overall, it's just a brand that I like, not necessarily one that I'm obsessed with. I have seen that product before, but I honestly don't remember what the ingredients are. So I'm gonna have to look right now. But to be honest, in general, it's hard for me to find a Cosrx product that doesn't fall in line with my skincare philosophy. Most most of their products, I look at the ingredient list and I'm like, good to go. Yes, sir. Okay, but this one primarily has glycerin. Oh, it does have coconut oil at the top, which the coconut oil used in skincare products is very different than like scooping it out of a jar and putting it on your face because it's more refined, so it's not as likely to clog your pores. But coconut oil is way higher up on this ingredient list, which communicates to me that this product is probably much more for dry skin, even though it has oily skin, but honestly, that's not a problem. Overnight, I always like to use really rich, moisturizing, thick, heavy creams to trap in any trans epidermal water loss, make sure I'm moisturized and prepped for the next day. It also has panthenol, it has propolis, it has some good silicones, it has a ceramide. Oh, it has sodium hyaluronate and hydrolyzed hyaluronic acid. So it has three forms of hyaluronic acid. That's really interesting because James for a while was taking a break from hyaluronic acid. I don't know if he still is. I mean, I guess not, but I believe he found that his skin was sensitive to hyaluronic acid and that's why he was trying to avoid it for a while. Maybe he's just focused more on hyaluronic acid minimalism because truthfully it is so hard to find a product on the market these days that doesn't have hyaluronic acid. Every single freaking product has hyaluronic acid in it, which makes it difficult for people who are sensitive to hyaluronic acid to be able to use those products. But I mean, the ingredient list looks great. It looks very, very moisturizing, very, very moisturizing, but it's overnight. You really want to get that moisture on. So I think it's great. I think like with the rise of skincare in the last two years and kind of like the rise of CeraVe being one of the best selling skincare brands, other brands have noticed that people do often just want simplicity within yes. their skincare. And I think I think in drugstores you really do find those simple but effective mm -hmm. products at a good price as well. I think a lot of people kind of like look down on drugstore products because yeah. they're affordable. But I think we have to get over this idea that expensive skincare is better and that more affordable skincare isn't because that's not true. I completely agree. I think the notion of like looking down on affordable products is stupid and elitist and classist and every other bad word you can think of. And I will say at one point, I wasn't a fan of drugstore skincare, not because of the ingredient list, but more so just because I wasn't able to get a sample. So I would have to purchase a full size product, just be able to try it once and find out it doesn't work for my skin. And then I have to waste the rest of the bottle. But now clearly I've taken a different approach when it comes to drugstore skincare. And I am a big fan of promoting drugstore skincare because it's the most accessible. It's some of the most affordable options. 
skins. It's easy to get. If it doesn't work for your skin, you can give it to someone else. But I've always felt that looking down on drugstore skincare because it's too simple or because it's too affordable is stupid. And I don't get that. The final product you use is the M Cosmetics mm. Lip Cushion. This is in clear. Quartz. I haven't heard of that one. It's just a lip balm is all. <laughs> Can't forget your lips. I like the so there we go. Though. That's, That's my really evening nice. skincare routine. What I uh... hope people take away from myself and other skin influencers is just inspiration on how they can create a skincare routine that's perfect for them, whether that's two products, whether that's 10, or you know, whatever a perfect skincare routine is to me, it's gonna be completely different to you. But as yes. long as you're having fun with it and it's working for you, stick with what you do, yes. stick with what works for you. So there we go, I hope you enjoyed that. That is my evening skincare oh, that routine. that was so Thank awesome. So that was so great, I love James. He's just such a beacon of positivity. Every time I watch one of his videos, I'm just like, oh, I feel better about life. And the best part is, is that behind the scenes, he's exactly the same. Like he's such a kind, nice person who has always been so supportive, so sweet. And just one of those people where I'm like, wow, I'm proud to be a part of this industry alongside you. And I'm so glad to see him getting all the success that he is getting because he honestly deserves it. And I think it shows that through kindness and warmth and treating others how you want to be treated is not only good for you, but it creates an example to other people. And I honestly really look up to James Walsh. What are my thoughts on his skincare routine? I have absolutely no complaints. That was a great, great routine. Um, Surprisingly, I loved all of the products, which sometimes James likes products that I don't like, but because he is focused on barrier repair, really helping his skin to recover, all the products that he uses actually fall in line with my skincare philosophy exactly. And I'm partially surprised, but I'm also not really surprised because James is very intelligent and he knows so many skincare products. He knows so much about ingredients. So I'm not super surprised. I thought this was a great routine. If I were to be like really picky, I'd say if I were doing this routine, I would not be spraying with the centella water between every step because oh my God, I would be sweating so freaking much. The rest the routine I think is amazing. He also does use three different serums, which normally I would find is a little bit excessive, but each of the products that he's using are focused on barrier repair and calming the skin and reducing sensitivity. So it doesn't become as big of an issue. I more so get worried about treatment serums that you're using on top of each other with actives or exfoliants because that's where it can get tricky. But since they're all focused on soothing the skin and repairing the skin, I don't see any issue with them. And I think it was great. I loved that routine. That was awesome. Good job, James. Like I said, if you do want to subscribe to James, go to the link in the description box below. Let me know who you guys want me to react to next and if you haven't already be sure to subscribe to my channel and to the notification bell so that you can see my videos every single week and i'll see you guys in the next one Mwah.